How's it going? Welcome to The Guitar Effect. My name's Rob. In this episode, um, we're going to be taking a look at a comparison between using an entirely analog rig to record electric guitar and an entirely digital rig to record an electric guitar. Before we do, as always, I'll ask you to please like and subscribe. So, last week, um, in the last episode, uh, if, you've, if you'd watched it, and hopefully you have, um, I went through my entirely analog uh, recording rig that I use to record m nearly everything all the time. So anytime I record anything, it's through a fully analog pedal board of about 10 pedals um, into a obviously analog amplifier head um, that has a emulator out that runs into my recording interface. So last week, in you know, in, in short, if you didn't see it, I demoed that rig as a setup and then um, recorded a sample of it playing using it to record left and right tracks of a double track guitar in, in a track so the episode previous to that i went through the moore ge 150 effects processor and amp modeler um which i picked up a little while ago and i thought it would be interesting to do the exact same thing um, with the modeler so not necessarily try to recreate the exact same sounds because i don't really believe in that as an ethos i don't think modelers are there or one piece of gear is there to emulate another piece of gear exactly. I think that's kind of a pointless endeavour and um, doesn't help anybody. So what I'm going to do is, based upon, around the same principles, so the cock, for example, amp I use, is a EL84 80s Marshall voiced dirty channel um, and a plexi, I suppose, voiced clean channel, but effectively it's kind of a... Marshall style amplifier. So I'm going to use a Marshall style amplifier on the uh, the G150, and I'm going to try and emulate the same effects that I use. Um, I'm going to use a Marshall amplifier for both clean and dirty sounds on the the G150. So how I've done that is I've gone into the um, editing software for the G150 and I set up some patches. So what I might do now is really quickly run through those guitar sounds out of context and just show you how I put them together. So here that is. So as you can hopefully see now, um, I have the editor for the GE150 up at the moment and the GE150 is here on my desk in front of me. So um, I thought it would be easier just because there's controls and so many, the controls are kind of limiting on the GE150 itself to do anything kind of fast, it's much easier to use the software. So I have a screen record going here with the software. So basically, this song, by the way, is called Trotsky for reasons that I won't go into now. But I've set up four patches, and those I did this last night. Those four patches are Trotsky L Les LP for Les Paul, Trotsky Fuzz, Trotsky Telly, and Trotsky Fuzz. And the reason is, as we go through the song, it's all one patch with some individual effects being turned on and off until we get to the point where we get to the end of the song and it changes into the same patch with all the effects off and just the fuzz. Same thing then for the telly, there's some slightly different modulation effects and then it's, it goes to the same fuzz patch, right? So that allows me to go... Sorry, it allows me to go to seven, which is the LP, the Les Paul sound, which is... And then hit one switch. Okay, so... um. I'm just going to explain how I made them and what settings I'm using here and stuff. So, on the main sound, first of all, right? So, the amp I'm using, if I go to the amp module, the amp is the J800. So, I'm using the JCM800 amp because it's, as I mentioned, it's, it's relatively close in principle to the uh, the Cox Studio Tone 20, right? Um, in the basic makeup of it. So, I'm just going to turn off all the effects I have on. So, I have a delay and a reverb on, but I'm just going to show you the amp by itself first. So here is the amp. Um, oh, by the way, as well, pretty essential to this is I've actually gone to the Blues 112 cab. And the reason is because I never use a 412 cab ever. I always use a 112 or maybe a 212 or two 112 amplifiers actually when I'm playing originals. But I never use a 412 cab and I found that the what it was initially quite pleasing. It's not my sound to have that much bottom end. So I've gone to a 112 cab because I feel it is closer to the way I'm used to sounding, um, and also on the speaker emulator that I put on the back of my Cox Studio 120 in the analog version of this um, take of the track, 
the emulator output has some settings so it's set to on axis and it's set to a 112 cab so I have 112 cab and I am in the center which is on axis so that's the cab the amp I have the gain maybe two-thirds of the way up for this because it's a predominantly a dirty sound so. okay it's gonna give myself a little bit more volume in the room Okay, and then so that the song starts off with that riff, right? It's going to give the guitar a quick tune using the tuner on the. Who'd have thunk it? I can't get a Les Paul to stay in tune on the G string. So, um. The bass fairly rolled on, the mids actually roll back a bit, the treble is halfway, the presence is fairly rolled on, and the master is at 85. So that is how I have the amp set up, and with just the amp, no reverb or anything, and the, and the 112 cap it sounds like. Okay, so that's how the riff's gonna start. Okay. Now, I always play a bit of reverb, so on the amp we have a spring reverb, so I have a spring reverb turned on. Okay, and then the other effect is I have a sort of eighth note delay, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so. Um, and that's predominantly audible in this part, so. This part. Okay, so I have that set up. And then when it goes into this build part, which is the B flat, and then the C, and then the, sorry, the B flat, the P, and then the, the C, apologies for that. So the B flat, the B, and then the C minor, which is the chorus note, I, I put on a phaser. So it goes like this. Just the, the, it's just the, the, the phaser called phaser, which I'm presuming is kind of like a phase 90 kind of thing. But on my pedal down here on the floor, the knobs are literally set that the depth is very, very high and the rate is very, very slow because I like a big, long passing phaser. So. so that's the phaser. That's all the effects that I'm using on this track, okay? And then what happens is all I do is I go up to hit the switch and bring myself up to. Trotsky fuzz. And what it does is just turns off the mod, leaves the delay and reverb on, but brings this DSOD in and it's on the grey face, which is a fuzz face clone. Um, and it sounds like this. And that's what ends the track. So on the original recording, I turned on the Tone City Fox fuzz, which is not a fuzz face, it's a full tone. 60s fuzz or something like that it's a clone of and um, but this to me gave a similar sort of vibe and achieved a similar sort of effect so the modulation goes off and the fuzz goes on in this patch and there that's all that's happening with the les paul on which will be the left side of the mix so i'm going to do the exact same thing and double it with a telly so i'm just going to grab the telly and show you the two telly patches now okay so back with the telly and I've moved on to patch 9, which is the Trotsky Telly. Now, while this is a different patch, it's actually fundamentally exactly the same thing. Okay, so if I go in again on Trotsky Telly, you'll see the amp is the same. It's the uh, J800. The cab is the same. It's the Blues 112. And the noise gate's still on. The delay and reverb are exactly the same as they were. Because it's for double tracking the same type of guitar. The only thing is, on the OD... DSOD patch on this particular patch. There was nothing on the regular non fuzz patch the last time. Now there is a tube screamer here for when I got to the chorus part. So it goes. Then I hit the overdrive. And I go. Okay, that's the only difference. I use that for the boost in the chorus. And also um, in the modulation patch, I've changed it to from a phaser. Sorry, my bad. Change it from a phaser to a 
I'm gonna change it. I thought I'd save this, obviously I had an analog chorus. Yeah, I'm gonna save that. It's handy that it just saves the change over to the unit. So when it comes into the build up part, I'm gonna turn on the modulation from this part, the actual the kind of verse break where it goes. And you'll see the delay and reverb are still the same. And then when we get into the chorus, this, the actual chorus effect stays on. Turn on the OD. And that's basically that. Come to the end of the song, switch over to Trotsky Fuzz. And that's it. They're the two different, four different sounds across two different guitars I'm using. The Trotsky fuzz for the telly is exactly the same patch. It's just copied to be in the right position. So they are the sounds um, that I'm using. Just those four sounds, two for the Les Paul, two for the telly, because I'm double tracking the guitar. How I base them and put them together was based purely upon what the uh, what my analog rig was. And again, not trying to match it, but trying to do something that would give the same effect. So as you can see, the G150 does a perfectly respectable job of creating um, alternative sounds to the ones that, you know, I'm using my pedal board and amp. I have basically have a pedal board and amp that I've selected. I've selected one amp that I use um, that I've set up to do all the sounds and I'm just using it with pedals the way I am with my analog rig. So it's, like I said, I'm not trying to match the sounds exactly, but I'm trying to approach it from the same perspective. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to record the same two guitar parts that I did last week using the analog rig, using this digital rig. Um, so you'll see the video of that and you'll hear those tones in play. And then immediately after that, I'm actually gonna play the same track that I did last week using the analog. <laughs>
And so, there you have it. Both the digital rig, being the G150, and my analog rig, being my analog pedal board and amp head, running into the same audio interface, playing the same guitar parts with the same guitars, and aiming for similar type of sounds. Be interesting to see from people which they they feel speaks to them more. Not which is better, but which they feel like, you know, just sounds better to them in the track, right? So, um, which delivers the parts better, I suppose, is the way I'd say it. Um, some will undoubtedly say this is an unfair comparison. The, the pedal board and amp would probably be somewhere in the region of a grand new, whereas the GE 150 is probably about 200 euro new. So it's an unfair comparison, but it's not really about that. It's about, I think, the quality of modelling on the GE 150 is pretty respectable. It's just the... UI, so the the user interface um, in terms of the two switches up and down and the one expression pedal make it a bit of a one-trick pony. But I think the quality of the modelling is quite admirable. Um, so I think that as a modelling device to record with, it's it's perfectly reasonable. Um, I use, as you probably saw in the first video, I'm having to do some effect turning on and off with my mouse on the interface um, controlling the GE150 uh, during that recording. So if it had more foot switches, I wouldn't have to do that. But again, if this was a real situation, I'd record all those, those separate guitar parts one by one. But just to show the comparison between the two, I've tried to keep it as much like the other setup as possible. Personally, I think that the analog rig sounds better in every way. Okay, so... I think the drives sound less, for want of a better word, computerized, right? They sound less digital, they sound less high-endy and lacking in mid-range. And I think particularly the delay just works far, far better from the analog delay pedal. I think that the spring reverb doesn't sound as overproduced or over overemphasized um, as the spring reverb on my amp. Um, I think both the phaser and chorus sound far more interesting and engaging on from my pedal board than on the uh, G one hundred and fifty. However, the G one hundred and fifty is the size of maybe two or three of the pedals on my pedal board, whereas the other thing is, you know, my other rig, my analog rig, is huge. So both have their benefits, but to me, sonically in a recording situation, just really, I don't think there's much comparison really. That's not to say the digital one sounds bad. I just think that the analog rig sounds significantly better. But it's it's personal taste. I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. So, that's kind of it. A bit of a shorter video this evening. Um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. My name's Rob. You've been watching The Guitar Effect. And I will see you again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.